Hi, and welcome to the section of the physics tutor. And in this section, we're going to complete our discussion of the electric potential. We're going to talk about several different things uh, here. And so one of the topics we're going to talk about is the electric potential due to a dipole. And then we're also going to talk about some different charge distributions and the uh, electric potential that results from that. So we're really re covering the same ground that we covered for the electric field where we first started with the point charge and then we went and talked about a dipole and then we talked about a few different other configurations. Uh, here we're really retracing our steps just talking about the potential. So some of the uh, things that you're going to hear today are going to sound very familiar and that's just because we're kind of retracing our steps a little bit. So uh, let's first talk about the dipole. Remember what, what is an electric dipole? It's just simply an arrangement where you have two charges, one positive, one negative, same value of the, of the charge, and the same number of coulombs. It's just that one is positive and one's negative, and they're separated by a distance d. That's called uh, an, a dipole, an electric dipole. And we talked earlier in the course about the fact that the water molecule is a polar molecule and it behaves kind of like an electric dipole because basically you have one side of that molecule that's a little bit more charged in the positive direction and the other side's charged a little bit more in the negative direction. So from a whole, when you back off and look at it, it looks like an electric dipole. So you can model it that way. So let's just go ahead and refresh our memory as to what a dipole is. We have a positive charge Q and we have a negative charge Q. It's really as simple as that. And so whatever that charge is, one of them is going to be positive and the other guy is going to be negative. And these charges are going to be separated by some distance d. Okay. And so we talked about uh, earlier in the class, we, we know what the electric field due to this dipole is. And the way we calculated it, we ended up with a relation that gave us the electric field along the axis. Okay, we didn't calculate the field out here, mainly because it made the derivation difficult uh, you know, to perform. But here along the axis, it wasn't really that big of a deal, so that's what we did. Now, if you kind of look at this, let me kind of redraw it here just so we kind of get our bearings. If you have some positive charge here, Q, and you have some negative charge here, Q, let's say you have some observation point out here, which is where you want to actually observe and figure out what the electric field is. I'm sorry, where the electric potential is, is what we're going to end up doing. Now, one thing I'll say right off the bat is, the reason we didn't calculate the electric field off axis from the dipole was because the electric field is a vector. So doing that derivation makes the math a little bit more complicated. So you generally won't see that too many times in a physics book. But the electric potential is a scalar. So it's actually not very difficult at all to calculate the sum of the two uh, electric potentials here, right? Because it's a scalar. We know, here we have a positive charge, we know what the potential due to this guy is. We've been studying the potential due to a point charge in the last section. And we know how to calculate it when the charge is negative, which is the guy down here. So simply adding these two guys up isn't that difficult. So the way you would do that, I'm not going to derive it for you, but I do want to give you a little bit of a, of a, um, of a guy. If this is the center of the dipole between the two charges, then this would be what we would call r. So this is sort of our independent variable, how far away you are from the dipole. But we're going to measure the uh, point of origin from the center of the two charges. Okay. And uh, you know, when you look in the books, you'll usually see when they derive it, this is what we call r plus. And here you have something called r minus. This is just the distance from uh, the top charge to the observation point, and this is the distance from the bottom charge to the observation point. Now, if your observation point is really far away, which usually it is, then, then these lines, because the molecule, you got to remember, is very small. This distance d is really small. So as you get far and far away from it, then these lines are going to start to look more parallel. But when you draw it like this on the board, they kind of converge at a point like this. So this is the observer. This is the value of r that we're really going to have in our final uh, equation. Then the angle here that you were off looking at is some angle theta. Now, like I said, we didn't have an angle theta when we talked about the electric field due to a dipole. And the reason we didn't was because we didn't even derive an expression that talked about the field out here off to the side. But for the potential, for the electric potential, your book is most certainly, almost certainly going to, to give an expression out here for the electric potential just because it's, it's not too hard to derive. So when we look out here, I'm not going to do all the derivation for you, but if you have, if you know the distance here and you know the distance here, and with the trigonometry you can figure out the difference in the distances between these two guys, and you can calculate the uh, 